an Alabama sheriff has actually defied Governor Ivey's order. This came from a report from the Coleman Daily News earlier. I believe that this broke on Sunday, so it's, it's actually pretty recent. You know how weekend news cycles go. This is a quote from that article. Blunt County Sheriff Mark Moon says that he's told his deputies not to stop businesses or churches that violate the governor's safer at home order. Moon noted that he cannot force himself to go after the hardworking people and churches for doing what they feel is the best thing for them, their families, or their congregations. And it is interesting to note that according to this same article, Sheriff Moon is also the pastor at County Line Baptist Church up in that area. Now, I think that really digging into this and what he's saying is, I, I sympathize for the guy, I really do. Because it is part of his job to enforce the law. And unfortunately, the way the laws of Alabama are written, it seems as though the governor does have authority to sort of broadly do this. The way it's being implemented, I think, is wildly wrong. And as I've said from the beginning, just from sheerly a liberty perspective, I, I cannot get on board with Governor Ivey enacting these things because I don't think that she has the right to. You're actually violating an inborn human right by ordering people to not leave their homes. That, that's just insane to me. Now, I still think that people should stay home and should self-quarantine, but it should be voluntary and these should be guidelines, not laws. However, the way that the law is structured, and I believe it's structured stupidly, the way that the law is structured, the governor does have the authority to do this under Alabama's law. She shouldn't, but she does. And the sheriff did take an oath to uphold the laws of the state of Alabama. And a sheriff, at least in the state of Alabama, can't speak to other states, don't know how that works there. In the state of Alabama, the sheriff is also a constitutional officer. But at the same time, if I were in this guy's shoes, I couldn't do it either. Because now, as a, and this is the reason that he should never be put in this position, as an officer of the law, I am caught between a rock and a hard place. I have to look at myself and say, all right, well, I've got a choice to make. I can either enforce the laws of Alabama by the duly elected governor of the state, who won overwhelmingly, by the way, not that that matters, she'd be duly elected even if she won by one vote, but you know what I'm saying. The duly elected governor of the state of Alabama has issued this order, and I have a duty and swore an oath to comply with those laws. That doesn't mean that Governor Ivey, you know, is a dictator and can tell sheriffs to do whatever she wants, but this does technically fall within her purview to be able to do, even though it shouldn't. So now I've got to choose between doing that and violating a person's God-given human right. And I would have made the same decision that he did. As much as I would feel that, that tear inside of me between, you know, what to do, and, and I have to think think about it and pray about it quite a bit, but ultimately I know how I think, and I know that I and a lot of other Alabamians around the state, if they were in this guy's position, would do exactly the same thing and, and look and say, look, I'm not going to treat a person like a criminal for going to worship God. I'm just not going to do it. And even though I got to believe that this guy did not reach this lightly, and by the way, there's evidence of that later on, and I'll share that in a second, but the guy's a law enforcement officer. I got to believe that most law enforcement officers, and I would assume just, you know, by giving benefit of the doubt, that this guy is a person like this, that he's not an anarchist. He's not somebody that, you know, believes in lawlessness or chaos. And I mean, if you're law enforcement, you get into that job because you want to protect people most of the time. So I've got to also believe that this guy does genuinely want what is best for his state and best for the people of his community. And he's got to look at the, those people. And, and I don't think that law enforcement officers should be able to just willy nilly say, no, I'm not going to enforce X law that I don't like. Cause then you do really do wind up with chaos and anarchy. Then you have all kinds of problems, but I'm just saying, if I'm in this guy's shoes, I, I think I'd probably wind up doing the same thing. I don't think I could have done that. And I would, 
as somebody that, that has a job, and part of the reason that my show started a little late is because I was doing stuff with my other job. Uh, being a disciplinarian and somebody that, that does have to deal with policy violations and that kind of thing, there are rules here on Faulkner's campus that I am in charge of enforcing that I don't like. Multiple of them. But I took the job. It's my job to enforce those rules. And I knew when I signed up for this job, there were going to be rules that I didn't like, but I already said to the, the staff and my boss and, and the university as a whole, I'm going to be the guy that enforces them. I am okay with taking on that job. I agree with, you know, 98% of the rules probably here at Faulkner. It's the 2% I don't, but I'm still in charge of enforcing them, and so I got to do it regardless. That came with the territory. That's not the case with this guy. Because I've got to believe, as a duly elected sheriff of the state of Alabama, who is a constitutional officer under our, our constitutional structure, the way that Alabama's constitution works, that he's looking at these orders saying, if you see a person, if you see more than 10 people gathering in a church together, you've got to pull them out of that church and arrest them or find them. He's got to be looking at that and like, hey, I didn't sign up for this. When I became a sheriff, this was not what I had on my agenda. And I get that, that he did know going into it that laws could change and there might be some things that he'd have to enforce that he didn't want to. But when it comes to that, I mean, that's a deal breaker, man. That's a thing where you got to sit back and, and look long and hard and go, mm, finding people for worshiping, yeah, can't do that. That's a violation of human rights. I didn't know that I was going to do that. It's the same thing that we had a couple years ago with the whole gay marriage thing with the county clerk in Kentucky. Basically, her stance was, I didn't sign up for this when I was elected and took the job. This was not part of it. And so this is a guy that is really caught in an impossible position. And he has to either violate his conscience and God or the executive order that KIV passed down the safer at home orders. And basically the way that he handles it is he just instructs his deputies. He's like, don't, don't do it. And, and I feel for the guy, but as further clarification for his thought process to help us understand how he arrived at this conclusion, he does speak up earlier today in a interview done by ABC 3340 where he said, and this is a quote directly from Sheriff Moon. Here's what the order is. Here's what the order says you can do. But we are not coming to your churches and pulling you out of your places of worship and putting you in jail and writing a citation for being in your place of worship. That seems like mincing words. That seems like the guy is trying to say, I'm not defying it but I'm also not going to enforce it. Well, by not enforcing it as a law enforcement officer, you are kind of in a roundabout way. Didn't, you, you are defying it to a degree. I think that that's, uh, he's trying to dance around the fact that he is in defiance of it. But I do also think that that is a pretty strong indication that this is not a guy that arrived at this lightly. This is not somebody that's just a rabble rouser or tried to, to make a, a big deal about it. This is not somebody that's doing it for his own political gain or somebody that's just, yeah, I'm going to stick it to Governor Ivey and, and we're going to, you know, basically... Rebe Th that's not what's going on here. And by the way, he also says as much directly afterward talking about the governor herself where he says, I'm not opposing the governor. I'm not defiant of her order. It's just we have people in our country that are hurting, that need to get back to work and support their families. I can't, in my heart of hearts, punish somebody for trying to do what's best for themselves, their families, and their congregations. That's soft opposition, but it's still opposition. Like I said, it's not that this guy is getting together a militia and going to storm the state house, demanding that Governor Ivey rescind the Safer at Home orders. That's not what's happening here. And I don't think that this guy is trying to grandstand or anything like that, because... Politicians kind of do that stuff all the time. This guy, from a, a place of meekness, is just coming forward and saying, I am not going to arrest people for going back to work so that they can provide for their families and going to church so that they can worship God together. I'm just not going to do it. 
And I feel for the guy. I do. But I probably wind up doing the same thing. So is he doing the right thing by doing so? I, I would have to argue yes. From a legal perspective, yeah. I, I, I would probably say no. Like, if you're asking me surely as an exercise in legality, I would have to say no. Because first and foremost, he is an officer, not even of the United States, but specifically of the state of Alabama. And he has sworn a oath to uphold those laws. And this is something that Governor Ivey, according to Alabama's laws, she is able to do, shouldn't have that power, but does. And so from a strictly legal perspective, I'd have to say he's probably in the wrong. But if you're asking me overall, as a moral perspective, which is the more important part of this equation, I'd have to say that he's right. As an, as an enforcer of the law, violating a person's God-given inborn human rights would be a bigger issue to me than disobeying a state law. And I don't take either one lightly, but I'm saying if I've got to choose between those two things, if it's just a personal preference and I just happen to not like the law, it doesn't matter. I'm a law enforcement officer. I've got to follow the law. But if it's not a personal preference, if this is a right that has been given to somebody by God, and it's literally the first right that our founders decided to include in the Bill of Rights as a listing of things that were given to people by God that the government shall not violate, I've got to draw the line there. And so I think that he did do the right thing. It's not exactly a secret that YouTube really doesn't like conservatives, so I'm asking for your help. I don't want to stick it to them. I just genuinely want to show them that conservative voices do matter and that there is a big, passionate audience out there that wants to hear them. So give us a like and subscribe, remembering to click the notification bell, and show YouTube that you do want more content like this. Sincerely, thank you.